Hello and welcome to a very special edition of Foreign On Sports X and O's. Usually we're talking high school sports here, but we're talking about a scandal in Major League Baseball. And when you think baseball, of course, in Southeast Texas, you think of Jim Gilligan. Oh, you're very kind. <laughs> so we decided to bring Coach away from the golf course because it's nighttime. So you That's can't right. play right now. So he had some time available. And let's just get right into it. I mean, it's been a busy week. And we knew it was coming, and then the hammer comes down Monday on the Houston Astros. Yeah. What, what went through your head at first? Well, first of all, I think it's crazy that it happened because uh, on something like this, there's no way that 25 players in the coaching staff and other people that are involved can keep that secret. It's going to get out. And uh, the, the thing that made me suspicious uh, was that you know, every time a, a coach would go out to the mound, he'd have his hand over his – mouth so they wouldn't read his lips and uh, then when I start seeing catchers uh, giving five signals with nobody on base or at least nobody on second base then I know he's protecting it from a center field camera because there's nobody else that, mm -hmm. that can get it from him. Everybody else is on his team. So um, th that made me suspicious that something was going on but um, you know it's allegedly it started out with, uh, with a coach and a player and uh, you just can't keep a secret like that, and it, it didn't stay. So initially it was the Astros hit with it, and then, you know, when Cora leaves the Astros organization, becomes the manager, and the very next year the Red Sox win the World Series, yeah. you knew they were going to start being under the microscope, and sure enough, Cora is now out with the Red Sox, and everyone is expecting them to get nailed next. Well, if you'd go ahead and lose, you'd probably get away with it. <laughs> right. But when you win, then uh, now it becomes an issue. But you've got to you've got to ask yourself, and you've got to ask actually players and managers that are in the trenches that see the results of what happens. Now it doesn't matter whether you get a good result or not. But I've talked to a lot of uh, major league players and managers, uh, and even in college. Uh, you know, we would steal signals all the time, mm -hmm. legally. Yeah. And there's a lot of ways to do that legally. And I, I would uh, say that if, if you like knowing what's coming, then get to work on doing it the legal way. Um, I think there are still some ways unexplored that are still, <laughs> still legal. But, um, you know, you, you just... Uh, I've had, like, Neil Reynolds, who played for me. He was a hell of a hitter, and Xavier Hernandez was pitching. Right. We're playing USL at the time. Right. Port they'll, always, they'll always yep. be USL to me, by For sure. But um, so I'm calling his pitches. I had, you know, he had a good slider and a good changeup. And so I was calling them, and Reynolds gets up and he struck out. And when I got back in the dugout, he said, I don't want to know the signals anymore. Mm -hmm. I said, you got it, big guy. So we're calling signals all year long. Gerald Clark was on that team. Gerald Clark never would have learned to hit a curveball if we didn't call it for him. And, uh, but he did and became a real good curveball hitter. Help him get to the big league. So I think it's I think it's useful as a college coach to to let guys know that it's coming so they don't fear the curveball because they'll spend their career fearing it unless you teach them how to hit it. And the best way to hit it is to know it's coming. For sure. Uh, fastballs you got you have to have the ability to be fastball efficient, but a curveball you can learn to hit and uh, giving them that information helps. Well, Reynolds didn't want to get it, get it. Um, I think he was a little hard headed about it. But we're uh, in the regionals. We're playing Oklahoma. And we're down by one run, second and third, and two outs. And Reynolds comes jogging down to me. He says, you got the signals? I go, still got them. <laughs> now he wants them. So now he wants them. And, and the guy that was throwing against him, there's an open base, so he's going to be pitching around him, good curveball guy. And Neil fouled off some good curveballs. He got one up. He doubles. Uh, and we're a winner. Mm -hmm. So I think it's always to your advantage to have them, but a lot of players don't like to have them. I talked to Phil Garner today. Uh, I was doing my walk out there at Willow Creek <clears throat> and uh, just talked to Phil because I know he was interviewed about, about this last week. And I asked him, I said, did you like to have the signal? And he told me that he didn't because if he knew a fastball was coming, he was going to swing. No matter what. Yeah, so just like a guy with a 3-0 and count. He says, yeah. if this guy throws me a fastball, I'm hitting it in the seat. So all of a sudden, they're not worried about getting a good fastball. It's any fastball. Mm -hmm. And you can't have that mentality. So a lot of times it'll take a good fastball hitter out of his good fastball mentality. Uh, so that's why a lot of guys don't like to get that information. So I don't know how useful it was. And, you know, on the other hand, I've seen some guys, if you tell them it's coming, it, it's, it's helpful. So you, you don't know. You, you have to look at the results. But that's not what the rule book says. Yeah. The rule book says if 
you use electronics to relay information during that game, it's illegal. So uh, that's what happened, and, and they're going to pay the price. I just hate to see AJ right. um, because to go down with it. I, I was uh, talking to Phil, and and he said that uh, he had heard that AJ had he went over to one of those uh, monitors, yeah, and just beat it up with a bat, and that was his message to his team that I don't like this. Mm -hmm. uh, but evidently, that wasn't strong enough for the commissioner of baseball. And he suspended him for a year. So, and the players, of course, get away scot free because uh, to testify, um, and they're the ones that benefited for sure more than anybody. So, um, I think it was on. Well, here's the thing: it's, they always say it's easier to fire one manager than 25 players. For sure, yeah. Uh, but I think he got the bad end of this deal uh, when you look at his involvement or lack of it. The other big issue with this is you lose the best, maybe the possibly the best. GM in baseball, oh, Jeff Luno. What a job he's done on putting that team together. And he has been adamant that he knew nothing about yeah. this. He is not a cheater. He had nothing to do with this. And you got to think this is going to set back the Astros moving forward. Yeah. Well, of course, the commissioner of baseball made it known early that if this happens, we're coming down on the manager and general manager. Mm -hmm. So they were warned, uh, but it's, I still think it's, it's unfair. And they are losing a great GM. He's really – done a great job on, on putting this team together. But um, I think both of those guys uh, are going to have jobs in a year. And um, I hope the, the Astros consider having both of them back. But somebody's going to get two good administrators in those two guys. Now, people might not want to accept it. And, of course, you teach your children not to cheat. You know, that's one of the lessons, you know. But as you grow up, things get a little more complicated. And while in college – you're not dealing with that center field camera, but there's other ways to get advantages. And what did you run into over the years when you were managing? Well, um, I'm not going to name names. <laughs> of course, you never I'm not going to name names. But um, there was a, uh, a guy that was a former big league guy and uh, was a great college coach. And he used to keep frozen baseballs. He had a freezer in his office, and 20 minutes before the ninth inning, or approximately, he'd get them all out to where – they wouldn't feel cold, and Babe Ruth couldn't hit one of those rocks right. because you have to compress a baseball <laughs> like a golf ball mm -hmm. to move it, and so you've got to froze it inside, and it feels good on the outside. So that's one of the things I've seen. I saw another coach that used to have three sets of base pegs depending upon the team he was playing over first base. Mm -hmm. uh, if a team couldn't run, you know, uh, or if they could run, he'd back them up. And, uh, you know, and then, you know, in college, um, the bats are the biggest issue. Um, when they started reinforcing with the rings in the bats, um, it made it like wood. And so uh, players would go in and remove the rings, and that had as big an effect to a hitter as steroids did to a hitter mm -hmm. uh, because those bats uh, now it had trampoline effect, whereas when they had the rings in there supporting it, it didn't. So uh, I've seen – those. that's the biggest one I've mm -hmm. seen in college. But, you know, there's – little things that guys will do. You know, I've seen guys wet a ball up a little bit. But, you know, if you taught every pitcher how to throw a spitball, I don't think you'd get two out of 100 that could do it. It never should have been illegal in the first place. You were talking about I, that earlier, right? I think that goes under the gamesmanship. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, getting away with it is... Of course, this is a pitcher talking yeah. and a pitching coach for a long time. Well, they made it illegal <laughs> because they said you put foreign substance on the ball and that would make the ball react. That's not true. Mm -hmm. It, it allows you to release a ball uh, like you're pinching at a, a seed, you know, uh, and that gives you a 90-mile-an-hour fourth ball. Now, you never talked about that pitch to your own pitchers, of course, right? Uh, no. no. Uh, now, I admit I threw one or two of them. Right. <laughs> uh, but, but, see, back then, you had horse hide, and it was, it was a lot slicker than the cow hide baseballs. So, and you had two different types of, of uh, leather on, on a baseball. And so that one that stayed white and very slick, as long as you, as long as you kept your, you know, your, your thumb on the ball mm -hmm. and you could pinch it out, you could throw a legal spitball. So um, I think it's good to know how to do that, but I think that's at the end of your career, right. you know, when you're hanging on. All right. Well, Coach, we're going to take ourselves a quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk about cheating in baseball over the years because this is not the first time, but it's been done in different ways. And uh, we were discussing how – Maybe this isn't even the biggest advantage you can get 
in baseball. There was something else that happened back in the 90s. We're we'll going to talk more about that coming up next on 409 Sports X the Nose. And welcome back to 409 Sports X and O's. We've been talking about the scandal in MLB. And not only that, but cheating in baseball over the years throughout college, even high school, major leagues. And we're talking so much about technology right now. But used to, it was more about a needle that was being used, especially back in the 90s when we had the great home run races and things like that. As a fan, sitting at home, as I'm, you know, I'm watching and I'm getting excited. But... It definitely did change things up in baseball. Well, it did. And, of course, it started out, I think, more with the use of amphetamines. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I've talked to guys about that that uh, openly admit that, that they used to use it because, you know, Major League schedule, playing every day, travel, is really Where's taxing. And, and I tell you what, back then, um, the players didn't take as good a care of themselves mm -hmm. as they do today. I mean, nutrition is part of the game now and um, and – getting more rest. I mean, if you talk to Al Vincent and all those old timers, it sounded like just one big party in between ball games mm -hmm. and, uh, and train rides. And so, so they used to take um, the uppers to, to take the edge off, but then it, it transferred into steroids. Now, I don't know what the true percentage was of players that were on the juice, but it was a very large percentage. So I think it's sort of, as far as wins and losses, I, I think it's sort of Kind of evened it out. It Canceled evened it out. out. But it did, it just did havoc on the record books, you know, because some of the home run records would still be standing um, if they had to do it on their own. But when you're talking about players that are either trying to extend a great career uh, or get into the major leagues, um, you know, with the money involved, it's, uh, you know, a lot of guys would do it. They asked Bob Gibson. I remember seeing him on a panel. They just asked him if, if he would do steroids if he was playing today. And he said, hey, yeah, sure I would. Right. He said, I was always looking for an edge. Mm -hmm. you know, so it's about, you know, uh, it's not legal. And uh, it had a big impact on the game. But, uh, again, so many players were doing it. Especially, uh, in, you know, you, you think of the big-name stars that were doing it. But there's also those day-to-day -day guys that are just trying to hold on to a job. That, that's right. And, uh, you know, they, they start doing it because they're just trying to find a way to stay up in the majors. Yeah, and uh, – you know, when you're looking at any time winning or money is involved, people are going to do what they have to do to win. And uh, now as a coach, um, I don't think you should promote it. And I, I, I'm serious about that. I used to tell uh, my coaches that if you cheat and you get caught cheating, I will fire you. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, when you have 35, 40 players and nobody's going to keep that many guys happy. So... You cut a player or he quits, anything you're doing wrong, they will expose. Mm -hmm. And that happened with one of the Astro former players. For sure. So, uh, so you got to understand that it's never going to stay quiet. Uh, but you, you, as a leader, should not be condoning going outside the rule book. Um, so, what you do is you, you find the ways to do it legally. Mm -hmm. And I, I think, you know, the stealing signals is a science. And there have been some guys that were just phenomenal at it. Uh, in college, it's easier because the players aren't as educated. Mm -hmm. So uh, as, a, as a third base coach, uh, I would see a pitcher coming you know, from behind his back, or my first base coach would see him uh, playing with the ball or holding it two scenes one way and four scenes for a fastball. Right. Uh, so many ways that you can get a catchers that will uh, sneak up on the plate when they're going to call that curveball in the dirt. So you know he'll give it away. Uh, the middle infielders, this is one that a long time ago they used to – have their hand behind their back, and if it was open, it was a fastball, close, curveball, or vice versa. So the outfielders would be able to get a jump. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
So you could, you know, like if you were my pitcher, I could look right by you into my bullpen and the guy would just touch his head on a breaking ball and I'd That's relay it. But, but here's the thing. What that taught me and how I relate it to what's going on is that for me to get that information to a hitter, the earlier the better. Because you don't want to be standing up there with your ear in a third base coaching box or the first base coaching box and your eyes on the pitcher. Now your attention is divided. But if I can get that information to you fast, then you might be able to use it. So I just can't see how they can go from the center field camera and text it on an Apple Watch mm -hmm. and relay that information in time for guys to effectively right. use that. And Pete Rose uh, actually said that, uh, you know, that he didn't think you could do it fast enough. In the, the whole garbage you know, can yeah. banging and things well, like that. They but, did it, but a lot, but a lot of it you would notice, and uh, people have researched into it. A lot of times they would bang the can on a changeup, and a lot of times it was just they would take the pitch. It was a pitch that well, would lay off. Usually, you know, if uh, I would imagine if they're banging it, 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 it knows it's not a fastball. Mm -hmm. So uh, slow it down a little bit because you're going to have to stay back a little bit better. Um, that's what I would do if a changeup was called. Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, it's just that you know. Um, you know, what speed is coming. But the other thing, too, uh, is location. And as a hitter, I would prefer to know where the ball is coming rather than what is coming. Mm. So, uh, if, and, and as a guy out of second base, you know, you can stand there and, and if I just take a half step back, that means he's going to throw it away. Mm. If I take a step the other way, he's going to, or, you know, whatever scheme you're going to come up with. But I would r much rather know location than the pitch. And, uh, and if, if you're a right-handed hitter and I'm a right-handed pitcher and he's set up inside, then it's 99 out of 100. It's a fastball because you don't throw inside curveballs on purpose uh, or sliders unless you're like a Maddox that sees a guy in on the plate and can freeze him on that pitch. Mm. But that doesn't happen a lot. So I want to know, you know where it's coming. And that's more helpful to me. But as I was telling you, I was talking about, I can look, you're my pitcher, or you're the pitcher. I can look by your head and, and see that guy down there. I can get it to you just like that. Mm -hmm. But I just can't see how that could be effective uh, with that time lapse in between. Now, one thing, and that's, they're trying to figure out how to counter technology now. Technology is going to be part of the game, especially with replay in baseball. They're going to be having cameras everywhere. There's been discussions of earpieces. There's all kind of... Uh, you know, radio yeah. communication. Do you think they're ever going to be ahead of the game now that technology is? Yeah, they'll figure part? it out. And, uh, and, and the fact of the matter is, if you know they're stealing signals, uh, if you can cross them up, if they give you a signal that a curveball's coming and they throw a fastball with two strikes, and it, it sort of a, it attacks your manhood when mm -hmm. you get beat by a <laughs> fastball like that. I mean, you get fooled by a curveball? Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, I was fooled. But you get beat by a fastball, that really hurts a hitter's pride. Yeah. And so if, if I can uh, see him doing it and then change the signal and beat the guy now, he will never listen to that guy out of second base mm -hmm. for the rest of the year. So you got to look at what you can do to upset that. And I, I think that's fairly easy for a smart catcher and a good team to find a way to, to reverse it on them and fool them to where they don't trust the information that they're getting. Last thing we'll talk about before letting you go is the, the big subject going on there is some people wanted the World Series championships stripped, no. take them away. I thought that was insane because then you're going to have to start looking at the steroid teams. You're going to have to look at the amphetamine teams. Yeah. You're going to have to look back. And you think Major League Baseball did the right thing with their punishment? Yes. Um, well, I don't agree with all the punishment, but um, that was the easiest way to do it. As I said, one manager easier than 25 players. Uh, but you can't take a championship away because there's no, there's no telling whether they were doing it. Mm -hmm. I, I heard the Dodgers may have been doing right. it. You know, so, uh, and they're the, guy, they're the guys with a complaint. So, uh, no, uh, you can't do that. They, they were smart in not changing that. Uh, because here's the thing. You, can, you get the information. You still have to hit it. You can know that. Um, you take that Washington staff. You can know a curveball is mm -hmm. coming. Show me you can hit that thing. I mean, it's pretty tough. And uh, you know Nolan Ryan's going to throw a fastball. So what? You're not going to hit it. Still going to have to catch you know, up and find yeah. that location. So, uh, yeah, so I, I think, uh, no, they did the right thing on that. and uh, They were put in a tough position, but I think they came down the right way on that one. Can the Astros still contend this year? 
Well, listen, um, first of all, it's, what's important is how their fans take it. And uh, you hear grumblings, but I think people will get over that. Uh, they still have uh, a great ball club. Uh, of course, they're going to have to replace uh, one of the best pitchers in baseball. When Cole left, uh, of course, Morton left, mm -hmm. and uh, they replaced him. So uh, I don't know who they're going to replace him with, but that vacancy has to be filled some way where uh, you, you put a guy out there that's going to win 60% of his games. Uh, easier said than done because he was a great pitcher. Certainly was, Coach. Always great to see you. Thank Actually, you for stopping by. Thank you. My pleasure. And until next week, that's it for 4-9 Sports, X's and O's.